All right, well, it's four o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, just welcome to the Community for Learning, the Community Learning for Me Facebook, uh, website launch party. And um, my name is Yvonne Thomas. I'm the Education Specialist at the Island Institute. And we are just really excited to have you here and to, to share this work with you. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping things. The first thing is the internet. Many of us are coming in from remote corners of Maine, and so sometimes the internet isn't so great. If anybody gets um, frozen or if we get cut off, please just be patient. It usually resolves really quickly. If you get kicked off, just come back in, and we intend to just keep going, and we will figure out the, any um, internet issues as we go along. My internet's been pretty good today, which I'm grateful for. This is a Zoom webinar format, so you can see us, but we can't see you and we can't hear you but we do want to hear from you. So please use the chat box and also the Q&A feature um, so that you can ask questions or, or make comments or, um, or communicate with us. We will be answering questions through the chat and Q&A as they come in. And then we will also answer some live at the end of the, um, of the tour of the website. One other word is that this um, format is a little bit new to many of us who are presenting. So we thank you in advance for your patience if we um, aren't super smooth. And now I would like to um, turn it over to Cora Soul, who is the incredible leader behind this amazing work. So Cora. Hi everyone. So <laughs> My name is Corisol. I'm the founding director of the Real Aspirations Project, and I have to confess this is my very first webinar. So if I had it my way, I would see all of your faces, and it would be uh, sort of energizing for me to get your uh, to to sort of read your faces and see um, how that could help me to move you through the website. So luckily, I can see all of my colleagues' faces on the side, and so we'll just see how this goes. Thank you so much for signing up. We're really excited about this project and we're really excited to show you the resource. Just to give you a little bit of background, the site has been launched for about four weeks now. We've had about 4,500 hits on the site. We're averaging about 500 a week. So we're really excited about the, the feedback that we're getting so far. Um, and just this, just last night at about 11 o'clock, we launched this new website, which was um, graciously designed by Redfin Solutions. And so we're excited to jump right into that. But in the meantime, let me give you a little bit, bit of background about myself. So I am Cora Sal, as Yvonne said, I'm the founding director of the Rural Aspirations Project. Rural Aspirations is a very small nonprofit and we work um, where we offer responsive professional development to rural schools across Maine. And as Yvonne said, I am the lead creator of the website. So back in March, uh, when COVID hit, uh, we started to think about our role in the educational landscape in Maine. And we started to think about, you know, clearly we couldn't be going into schools and we felt like we really wanted to be supporting teachers and we wanted to be supporting parents. And we started to hear about all of these amazing things that were happening in Maine in nature based organizations and liter literacy based organizations and in the in the visual and performing arts world. And so we felt like it would be great to pull together a resource where Maine teachers and Maine families could go to one place to find Maine based resources. And so really highlighting the community nature of our state, but also the amazing array of opportunities that are available out there for, for, for kids and, and teachers and families. So the goal of the website is really connection. We really wanted to have um, personal connection be uh, sort of the cornerstone of this website. And so we, we reached out to organizations and asked them if they were offering sessions that were live sessions where kids could interact or parents could interact or organizations could interact with each other, learn from each other and support each other in this really isolating time of social distancing. So we wanted to create that place to support each other as parents and also as teachers. And many of us are teachers and parents. So not only are we trying to figure out how to manage our own classrooms, but we're also trying to figure out how to manage our own homes as well and balancing that professional with that personal. 
So we really, the goal is to provide a comprehensive resource that re reinforces that continued education for our kids and for ourselves, whether we're at home or at school. And I have to tell you, this has been one of the most enriching professional development experiences of my life, reaching out to all of these organizations and seeing the amazing opportunities that are happening, but also bringing together some great organizations to think about, collaboratively think about interdisciplinary opportunities where we can support our kids. So today we're gonna jump into the site. I'm gonna give you a virtual tour. We have some of our website partners here on the webinar with us. So they'll be linking in and talking to you about their role in curating materials for the site as well. This has certainly not been an individual effort. It has been a, a collective uh, effort. So let's see if I can smoothly um, get into the website and show you the home page. So for those of you that have been on the site before, you can and weren't on it today, you can see that the that the platform looks really different from where it started to where it is. Um, this platform has really amazing capabilities for organizations to interact with the site, become partners with the site, add their own resources, take their own resources off and sort of be in control of, um, of broadcasting the amazing offer offerings that they have for families and for educators. So you can see that there's three different places to enter the site. There's a spot for families, there's a spot for educators, and then there's a spot for organizations. And this is reflected also in the menu at the top. You can see that there are resources for students, families and educators. And then at the very top, we have a shout out to the 56 organizations who are representing sessions on this site as of right now, as of today. Um, there's an About Us page, a contact and, and certain, and a, and a little donate button too, if you wanna throw some resources our way. So we have a space here for main organizations to reach out. So we know that we have not reached out to all of the networks and all of the organizations in Maine. So if you represent an organization that's not represented on the site now, please let us know and we'd love to get your resources up here on the site. We are able to look at all of the resources that we have to offer. And so on this, on this front page, we're able to put some special sessions that we highlight for um, events, for activities, for kids. These will change each week as we look through the offerings and, um, and curate uh, some special activities for the front page. We also, the same thing for, for adults. So we have those resources that are for kids. We have resources for the whole family. And then we have resources that are specific for a teacher or for a parent. There are ways that you can contribute and we're hoping that this becomes an interactive platform. So we're really looking for feedback so that we can be responsive to the sessions that we offer. Uh, we would love for folks to attend sessions and utilize the resources and then contribute to this effort as well. You can join or start a support group or provide us with that feedback that we're really, really looking for. So the site was established as a temporary resource to COVID-19, but I think that our core partners will agree that we see this as a potential long-term resource, especially for communities that have um, maybe geographic or financial barriers to accessing some of these amazing resources without COVID. We don't know what's gonna happen in the fall. It's gonna be a really interesting summer this summer, trying to figure out professional development, and so we want to be sort of a backbone for that work so that teachers and families can continue to rely on this resource as a place to get high quality experiences for their kids. And then a, a really gracious um, thank you to the foundations that have supported this work, the Elmina B. Sewell Foundation, the Grassroots Fund and the Onion Foundation. So I'll take you back up. This is essentially the homepage and I'll take you back up and I hope I don't make you too dizzy to the, to the three main entry points and we'll start with families. 
And so these resources are designed to support you. They're designed to support your children. Uh, the resources that you see for my child here and the resources for my class are the same. They're just two different entry points. So you can reach out as an educator or you can reach out as a family. You're going to see the same resources. So let's start by looking at resources for my child. So we have this really dynamic search feature here where you can put in, and I, this was an important piece for me when, when we were thinking about designing the site is when you uh, really need an activity and you need it quickly and you have a specific uh, age group of your children, like can you put something in and get an activity uh, right away? So let's try that for pre-K through four. And we're going to think about a visual and performing arts activity that happens as a live event on Monday in the afternoon. So if we, let's see if, if the magic can happen. And what we can see is that there are two activities that are happening on this day on Mondays at two o'clock in the afternoon. So Summer Festival of the Arts has been offering an amazing array of activities. They happen to have Drawing with Mrs. G on Monday afternoons. And there's also a virtual story time through the Waterville Public Library. So to, to get more information about this, you click on the resource and it brings you to the resource page where you can learn about the presenter, you can learn about the platform, you can learn more about the activity and you can register right here. So you don't need to go to another website or you don't need to, um, to, to search all around trying to find how to get in there. You just click on that link and it will take you directly to the activity drawing with Mrs. G. So if I go back to families here and I decide that I really am looking for a resource for myself, I can choose and maybe I'm choosing to look for something for dads. I can choose dads and I can choose support group and I can hit search. Oh, it's not there. So we'll try a different search. We'll look at parents and guardians and we can look at live events and we'll search and we can see the gear parent network is an amazing resource that we have found through this process and so they're they're offering um activities almost weekly so they have video chats for parents or helping children manage meltdowns which we've all been through before if we're parents um, and so, and there's also some educational activities. This is the, the new picture book review that Allison Johnson is offering through the Island Readers and Writers. And I'd like to just give a little bit of, um, a little bit of screen time to Dan Pullman, who is uh, the director of the Parenting Relationship Lab at UMaine. He and his team have been curating the families page. Um, so you can talk a little bit about the work through that you've been doing with the website, Dan. Thanks, Cora. It's great to see you guys are here. So you know that you're all there, I guess. Um, we are really helping out and trying to provide resources that are really engaging for families and doing a lot of the live events or, or some of the live events, I guess. Uh, really, uh, we have a couple events, some for dads to engage uh, around issues that are particular to men and, and, and challenges that they're going through here. Uh, we also have some other activities such as cooking with Kichi or family workout that many of my research assistants are putting on that are really designed to, you know, just be something enjoyable and fun and something outside the norm. Uh, we're all going through some pretty mundane experiences and it's getting kind of boring. So for us to throw out some of these group activities for us to group together and have people around us uh, just to kind of interact and, and nothing necessarily educational, but something useful for, for enjoying some time together. And, and really these events are oriented towards building parent relationships with kids. And so that they're able to maintain their connections and, and, and build relationships that are stronger uh, at, rather than, like I said, going through the experiences that we're going through now. So, um, you know, we're, we're putting on a number of events that will persist for the next couple of weeks and in through the summer and, and beyond that. So uh, yeah, great. I hope to see some of you in, in our events. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Cora. Ooh. We'll head back to the main page here, or we can access it through here, and we'll start to think about what's offered for educators. So you can see that um, what we realized uh, when we first started designing the site, we started thinking, we, we began to think about, can we offer live sessions that students can access right away? 
And what we realized right away, not that we didn't already know this, but that teachers are really at the front line of empowerment for parents. And so it's really important for teachers and families to have a similar resource so that if a teacher saw a resource that was really exciting for their students, they could send that teach that parent that site, this this site, and be able to get into that that resource or access that resource really easily, and then also entice them to look into other resources or other activities that are going on. So you can see that there are some several choices here and these are these are sub pages that are off of our off of the um, sort of original web page. And so I'd like to introduce um, Bill Zolik from the Skudik Institute to talk about the nature based ed work that he, Sarah Hooper and Olivia Grissette from the Maine Environmental Ed Association have been working on. Hi. Um, first off, as Cora mentioned, there are, uh, um, if you go back to that page just real quickly, Cora, okay. uh, when you come into that page for educators, there's resources for students, and she already showed you how you can search for grade levels or uh, different kinds of topics. And for teachers, it's the same thing. So if you're a teacher coming into the site and you're looking for something for five through eight, and you're looking for something in science or for ELA, you have a way to find activities for those students. So that's that's that route, you've already seen that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this nature-based teacher networks and PD opportunities. So we can go there now, okay. Cora. Um, as Cora said, this is a, uh, this part of the page is, is sort of a joint effort of the Maine Environmental Education Association and Olivia and then the Scudic Institute, uh, which is me and, and uh, Sarah Hooper. And what we, we conceive of this is so much not about us, is about the network. So it really is a matter of using uh, both the M MIA, the Maine Environmental Education Association, the Scudic Institute, are connected with teachers and organizations across the state. And so what we've been doing is we've been calling upon those folks to, to bring together uh, things that can be used for teachers. This page uh, is, a, is a way to, to, to highlight that. What you're seeing here is that every week we'll have something that we're highlighting that is, and, and this will be changing all of the time. Uh, last week we had a phenomenal workshop that uh, two teachers, uh, John Van Dees of Islesboro Central School and Ed Lindsay uh, of Old Town, um, put together in terms of how they are actually, um, in some ways, deepening the science learning they're doing with students uh, during COVID uh, by working with students uh, in individual projects. So this was inspiring science learning, uh, individual science learning. So when we do something like that, it, it, you know, we hope that you can attend in real time, but if you can't, we try to uh, capture it in the video. So the video is here and, and you can click on that and um, it's a workshop, so it's not a short video. It's, it went on for about 45 minutes with a Q&A at the end and um, you can watch the workshop, but I you know, encourage you to do that. But it, it's just as important as the workshop, we go back to the nature-based page, Cora. Uh, when these teachers work with us, they, they provide a whole lot of resources. So, so in this case, if you click on that, there's uh, an entire repository of uh, folders that consist of Google documents, slideshows, uh, forms that they've used with their students, uh, and all of those are uh, available that any teacher can get at these, make copies of them, uh, and use them in his or her classroom. Um, our goal is to really try to create a, a forum here where teachers in Maine are working with other teachers in Maine and, uh, and hearing from each other. Let's go back to the, to the nature-based page. So that was, and th there'll be many more of these things. Uh, uh, so one was last week. We, uh, every week we'll also have various categories. The, these little boxes will change depending upon what's hot. Uh, this week we've got some weekly programs that teachers could use, mini adventures that would be something that you could do over the course of the week. There's also daily activities that you can dive in. And there's also live online opportunities for teachers to um, uh, bring their students into touch with sciences. Next week, for instance, there's two of them, on May 19th, so go ahead and click on that. Gulf of Maine Research Institute, another partner, is um, offering a, scroll up just a second, I wanna show it's 10.30, in the morning on May 19th, uh, it's, it's 
grades five, eight, or high school. Um, you can register, as Cara said, you don't have to go to another site. You don't have to go hunt around for this. This isn't something where we're going to send you someplace else. You can register right here, the tab is there. If you scroll down now, Graham Sherwood, uh, He's a junior, uh, senior GMRI uh, researcher. He's, he's looking at food webs uh, and behavior uh, and different kinds of fish. Uh, the workshop is really aimed at students. Uh, the idea really is that a teacher could bring a whole class in and this would become uh, an hour, 45 minutes or so that they spend with a scientist and that becomes the basis for activities for a whole week. Uh, We'll be doing these, GMRI will be doing those sorts of things throughout the month. They're not the only organization. So go ahead back, Cora, to the, I guess, Nature Bates page if we can do that. Yep. Um, as an example of something that's in more immediate than that, that you could do right now, go to daily science activities, explore the activities. Uh, this is some really nice work that the Harpswell Heritage Land Trust is making available. And it's really a whole collection of things that you can just grab and do uh, in any given day uh, with your kids. So again, big idea is that there is so much available in Maine when you look across the state in terms of uh, organizations and just individual teachers working in, and we conceive of, of the site as a way to, to really create connections uh, that, that maybe you didn't even know about. So uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Back to you, Cora. Thank you, Bill. So we're going to continue to explore the educator page just a bit more before we introduce Allison Johnson. Uh, we I would like to just uh, orient you to the scheduling individualized teacher sessions. We feel like it's uh, we've had really great luck meeting individually with teachers to think about what are the challenges that you're facing, who are your students, and how can we develop partnerships or curricula to best meet your needs? We're, the school year is winding down right now. And so teachers are, you know, they've gotten a bit into a groove, but, um, but we are also available to think about um, anything that's happening in the fall. So there are opportunities for you to think about professional development. And if the school year is ending on the fifth and you have some days left to think about professional development, you can go in here and click on teachers and professional development and you can find recurring events so things that are happening weekly you can also find special events which are happening uh, once at a particular time and then you can also find anytime resources so these are resources that have activities lessons that are all ready for teachers to be able to grab and take from their website so you can go click on these and you can get right to the website and you can start kind of curating on your own through whatever the topics are that you're interested in for your class and so i'd also like to introduce allison johnson she's the director of school programs for the island readers and writers and she can talk a little bit about the work that she's been doing with literacy hi everyone and thank you cora thanks for um hosting this webinar and um it's really been a treat to work with all of these wonderful panelists who represent these organizations pulling these resources together um, we have been meeting weekly and it's just been delightful to meet everyone or re-engage with old friends. Um, so thank you to everyone. Um, you're in the educator resource page there, I think still. So if you, um, you had see, if you scroll down, Cora, I think you already had some of the offerings from Island Readers and Writers popping up. So there's one that was on the 13th and we've offered several um, sessions on the whole book approach, which is a really um, great way to look at um, picture books in their whole art form. It's a, um, a process that was developed by the Eric Carl Museum along with Megan Dowd Lambert. Um, and so we've been offering those sessions for teachers or families. Parents can attend as well um, to find a, a new way of looking at books and using them with your children. Um, and so we also have, if you keep scrolling, there's another offering uh, books as launching pads for learning. So this is talking about Island Readers and Writers work 
and the way we use books to engage learning uh, across content levels. So we highlight some of the resources on our website and um, show some of the ways that schools of ours, teachers have engaged around books for authors and illustrators when they were able to physically visit in the classroom. But much of this can be pulled off the website to do uh, at home virtually as well. Uh, and we also have a session that started today um, and I'm, it should be in special events for yeah, resources for students. Um, this was a live event, um, part one of a four part series, Making Comics with Ben Bishop. This was a Facebook live event. Um, and so Ben is a graphic novel a comic book illustrator from the Portland area. Um, and he is walking participants through the process of um, pulling out the narrative of a story, looking at the actions and how do you take that and put it into a comic book form. We had uh, about 30 participants today. I think there are several schools involved and Cora, maybe you wanna talk about how we were able to connect a teacher that you work with into this. Program. Yeah, I'll give, a, I'll give a shout out to Jill Plummer, who is a um, middle level teacher at the East Grand School, which is a fabulous school on the border of Aroostook and Washington County. Um, I spoke with her the other day about her students and she was really um, struggling with trying to think about how to engage them at this point in the year. The kids are tired of, of virtual learning and so uh, we just happened to have um, this resource and knew of this resource through this website and so I offered this to her and we did a little bit of curriculum planning around how to get her kids involved in this and then what her expectations would be for her students. We created an outline for her students and then a final product for them and I believe today they, she had six students entered into the Ben Bishop workshop. And that, those sessions, um, after they run, like this remains on our site. So if you can't make uh, the live sessions, you can always go onto our site. It, um, they will be there for 30 days after that final session. Uh, and we'll continue to add um, offerings um, as we come up with them. I happen to have a donation of a bunch of books from Melissa Sweet, who serves on the Ezra Jack Keats Committee Award. Um, or award committee, I should say. And so I'm going to do a session next week on uh, highlighting picture books uh, for, for people who can't get to the library right now. You can't um, go to the bookstore and kind of browse those books. Well, I've got a bunch of new books that are going to go out to kids in schools, but we're going to highlight some of those. So quick sessions, half hour long, just give you a taste of what's out there. Um, and again, we're really excited to be part of this organization. So thank you. Thanks, Allison. So we're gonna head back to the homepage now to talk a little bit about organizations. Hopefully some of you that are out there on this webinar representing organizations. And we'll talk a little, I'm gonna introduce Val Peacock from Rural Aspirations. She's an educational design specialist and also instrumental in founding and developing Rural Aspirations to talk a little bit about how organizations can get involved. Hi, so I'm Val Peacock. Um, I, uh, as we were putting like this the idea for this website started to come together, um, we started to realize the sort of breadth and depth of resources that are being offered in Maine, as well as the, the just the all the sort of variety of organizations who are stepping into the space to offer resources to teachers and to, to families and students. Um, and so um, the, the first iteration of this was a, a Wix website that we were kind of doing in a homemade way really quickly and realizing that we were, um, it was kind of putting a lot of space on us to enter in other people's information. And so one of the things that we're most excited about our work with Redfin um, to develop this website is that if you are interested as an organization to be part of um, offering things onto this website, um, we would love to start a conversation with you to talk about that to what what you have to offer and what what types of resources there are and, and how how we might um, display them in this site but once once we've sort of created that partnership we'll be actually able to give you um, an organizational login into the site where you can enter your own resources right in and they'll automatically 
populate the um, search engines and the pages that they belong in, which is something that they were most excited about. So um, if you head either on the first page or if you go onto the contact us page or even on the organization's page, any of those pages will have a get in touch with us box. You just click on that and just shoot us an email. You can also find us through Raw Aspirations. Our, our website, our emails that way. Um, and, you know, we'd be glad to talk with you about um, what the website is and how it can work. Um, and even thinking about ideas that maybe aren't even on the website. Um, this morning, Cora and I were talking with some folks about trying to um, create some student, student created or student led content on this page as well, sort of thinking about um, new and, and expanding ideas for things that can happen here. So um, just shoot us an email. And um, once, once we uh, have some contact and some relationship, we'd We'd love to set you up so that you can actually enter in your own information into the site and, and be part of this as well. So, and I'd just like to reinforce that, that this is a, this is an evolution and we need your help and we need your contribution to make it the most amazing that we can for Maine families and Maine teachers and Maine students. It has the potential to be a really interactive long-term space, but we need folks interacting with it to be able to make it that. So please reach out to us and let us know if your organizations are offering things. And we'll let you know too. I mean, we're looking at the analytics of this and we're looking at what folks are clicking on and what folks are interested in. And we'll adapt the site as we need to based on those analytics. So, um, so keep it keep it in the forefront of your mind and keep visiting because uh, there will be changes as we move along and just finally i'd like to give a little bit of a shout out to the on the about us page these are the organizations that i reached out to in the early morning of like march 13th and march 14th with this wild idea of creating a platform that's main based for main teachers and main kids and these are the folks that stepped right in and said oh yes we would love to help you we, we, we would like to be a part of it. So there's Island Readers and Writers, Allison Johnson, Olivia Grissett from the Maine Environmental Ed Association, Sarah Hooper and Bill Zolek from Skudik Institute, Dan Pullman from the Parenting Relationships Research Lab, Redfin Solutions has been fabulous. This is a process that usually takes months and months for a client to go to a web designer and say, could you design a site for us? They have done it for us in two weeks. So uh, we are so thankful to them. We also would like to thank Paige Nichols of Maine Devar Department of Education and Kat Biddle from the UMaine College of Education and Human Development. And again, our foundational partners Elmina B. Sewell Foundation, the Grassroots Fund, and the Onion Foundation. So please remember that we are a small state and that we all offer lots of expertise and we can't do this without all of you. So reach out to us and help us build this amazing site for um, Maine kids and Maine families. And, um, and hopefully what we can do is really offer opportunities for community-based resources, breaking down financial barriers, breaking down geographic barriers, and really opening up these opportunities to kids from all corners of our state. So thanks so much for attending our webinar. Looks Laura, like Sal has her hand up. Yeah, I just wanna, um, could you, I, I know just before people jump off that, um, on the, can you go to the Contact Us page for a sec? at the top. Um, like Cora said uh, lots of times, we're really interested in what you think about this, things that you like, things that, that work, things that are easy, things that change, suggestions of things to put on here. Um, if you have a few minutes um, to just click on this box on the, on the Contact Us page, um, it'll just take you to a quick Google form survey um, asking you of just to give us a little bit of feedback about the site. So um, we would we would love to get that from you today. Um, and, and as you continue to use use the website um, to just jump in there and really, um, you know, if it's a tiny thing or a big thing, we'd love to hear it. So thanks, Val. Mm -hmm. I can also put that link in the chat so people could go, get to it that way as well. And um, and I've been answering questions as they've come in. They've been pretty specific, but we can just um, see if there are any questions. And one question that I wanted to just um, ask her is, um, Cora, if you could take us to the section where there's the tutoring service that's offered. That's a really valuable thing um, that we want to make sure people know about. Val, can you talk a little bit about this? 
Yeah, so, um, you know, there's uh, not only are all of our high school students are home, but also all of our college students are home. Um, and we have quite a lot of education college students who have, um, you know, requirements to do contact hours or to do observations or to do work, uh, work study or to do student teaching. And so we were contacted from the College of the Atlantic. And this is a great example of what can happen, right? So they um, have students who need time who are education students who um, are looking to connect. And so we've created this virtual um, online tutoring service. So if you have students who are um, needing help with their math homework, you just can't figure out how to do those, the funky new division that they make you do these days. That's not like the way we did it when we were kids. Um, you know, these guys would love to jump in. So in order to do this, you have to actually schedule and request a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, and not only just tutoring, but um, the students would be glad to just read to your students or have your student, have your kids read, read to them. Or, um, you know, if you wanted to set up something where you have every Monday a meeting um, to organize your week, look at your schedule, get a plan, kind of check in and see how things are going, that can happen as well. So um, you just click on that, the, um, the submit a request it'll take you to a form and you just kind of tell them what you're looking for and you'll get you'll get an email back and you can set that up for whatever time um, works for all of you so it's pretty exciting to see and we're, we're hoping that um, this is something that could potentially continue beyond um, you know, the COVID crisis as well so thanks for pointing that out Yvonne yeah definitely so we'll just um, stay on a little bit longer and see if anybody has any other questions or comments. Um, and thanks to those who have been asking questions and thanks for the, for the, um, for the comments that people have been making. So we'll just, we'll just stay on a little bit longer, but, um, and if there's any aspect of the website that you want to spend a little bit more time on with any of us that are here, feel free to just say like, take me to science middle school or um, whatever, whatever might be useful for you. Um, as far as attendees go to learn more about it and figure out how you might be able to use it or share it with, with families or colleagues. But otherwise, if you wanna go, you can go. <laughs> and thank you so much. Thank Many, many thanks to everybody for attending. Sorry, I gotta do the, the wrap up, but we're staying on. Uh, thank you everybody who came. Some of you had a struggle to get in and good for you for figuring it out. Some of you came early and got to see us practice. Thank you for your patience there. And um, again, just so excited about the website and really seeing it as the, the community, the community learning is really the important part of it. And so we're all part of this and, and the more that we can get folks like you involved, um, the better the website will be. So thanks again for making the time today. And um, that's all. Got a couple of um, comments coming in. Um, one is um, somebody who's written a book, Nurturing Nature, and um, would like to send us a copy to see if we could use it on the website. So that's, so um, Sally, we will follow up with you. Definitely would love to learn more about that. And then another question about safety for, um, for students. So, so how, um, how can we ensure safety for students if a teacher is gonna say, hey, go to this site or check out this, um, this, this resource, how can we be sure that students are safe? Val, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure. So that, that actually um, is definitely something that we've thought about right from the beginning. You know, as things started to come up, um, you know, right away, as soon as students were sent home, you, I think we all sort of felt that there was this just deluge of things out there, right? People offering things and putting that there in the space and people had never heard of Zoom or now Zooming, right? And then fairly quickly, people started to realize what that was and we started to hear about what the problems were with that were. Um, and I think we all in this room and, and sort of the um, designers of this were really aware of that. We wanted to make sure that we were thinking about um, how to make sure that we were offering quality and consistent um, offerings and you know when we started out thinking what can we give for students and then we kind of backtracked and so now we're uh, in terms of thinking about what can we offer families and and teachers and a sort of way of getting to students so a lot of the resources that you see here um, are, are for families and for students I mean for teachers so th those are sort of obviously vetted the ones for students that we're putting onto the site are ones that we feel comfortable are um, coming through you know 
organizations that have reputations, that have experience, that have qualified presenters. Um, a lot of them are, have, I think, um, a lot of them are anytime kind of things, archive things, so those are obviously easier. Um, the things that are Facebook Live are, are less interactive. And then um, one of the things that we've done is we tell you what the platform is, that it's a Zoom platform so that you sort of know and can see that and kind of get the information about that. So, um, you know, you, the, the, we're feeling pretty comfortable about what's on here. Um, even I was just talking about the tutoring. So and if you do sign up for a tutoring with a, with a college student, the first session um, will be with the advisor and the student and the parent and the, and um, all the college student and your and the child all together to make sure that there's agreements about how that's going to go and that everyone feels comfortable with that relationship. Um, so we are definitely thinking about that and, and thinking very carefully about how we do that. Um, I, I just actually realized right now, Cora, that in our old site we had a Zoom safety tips for parents and for teachers that hasn't been transitioned over to here, but we can we can definitely put that on here um, as we sort of just put that out there, but. Um, I think the you know the question that I saw also had things about vetting like how are organizations vetted and that as we right now we're we're dealing with organizations that we have relationships with the people that we know that we've talked to that we we've um, you know really tried to understand what the resource is before it goes on the site and we'll we'll continue to keep going down that road if anyone has anything else to add yeah I would just say that 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 I personally or folks from our team have met with and reached out to every single organization that is on this site. So they, there's nothing on this site that hasn't been explored and investigated by the partners of the site. And that will continue to be so. So this is not an open site where you can just kind of add resources as an individual or um, you really, you need to go through the, um, the folks on the About Us page, we call it the, the, the creative website design team um, to be able to, um, to be approved to be on the site. And even with the organizational password, you still need to have an approval to, be, to have a, um, a session on the site. I would just add that in some ways, the whole idea of the site was to get away from just lots of lists of things that weren't vetted. The whole idea was to make sure that uh, that we're looking at stuff that's truly curated for, for folks. Yeah, and, and right now you're seeing that the audience, you know, it says families, educators, and organizations because we're, we're assuming that students would access through their families and through their teachers and through the organization, you know, that it's not um, students coming here and trying and finding these things on their own, that there's sort of layers of us, us curating and vetting and then a family or a teacher also sort of going through that and saying, okay, this is who my student is or who my child is and this is what I need and this is how, you know, what do I need to think about in order to get them there. Um, so, you know, we are definitely aware of the, of the safety issues and, and, and trying to organize that way too. Great, yeah, but thank you. Um, I think that was Laura for bringing that up because that, that is a really important piece and something that we've given a lot of thought to, so yeah. Just um, wondering, there's still quite a few people on, so does anybody else have any other questions or places that they want to learn more about in the site or places that you'd like to, to go and look at with us? If you do, just put it in the Q&A or in the chat and we'll go there. I'm also seeing comments in the chat where people are sort of saying that they would like to be part of this and Honestly, that was the whole point of this webinar. <laughs> That's why we're doing this. In touch, we'll, we'll get right back to you. Yeah, and we have, we have, we'll keep the chat so we'll know um, and we'll definitely reach out to you for those. Yeah, and I guess I would just add to that that, um, that I have probably six or seven emails in my inbox right now that I haven't been able to get back to because of this transition in the site. So if one of you are on there, I know that your email is there. I will get back to you. And um, and if you are an organization that has put something on the, on the site and you don't see it, please let us know that as well because we have transferred just in the last 24 or 48 hours, we've transferred everything from the old site onto the new site and there's a real good possibility that we've missed something. So let us know that too. We'll continue throughout this week, looking at the old site, looking at the new site, making sure that we've got everything. So, um couple of um, couple of questions are coming into the Q&A. One is about the tutoring. Is that limited to Maine students is the question. Good one. <laughs> you might have stumped us. 
Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. I mean, I, I think we, um, you know, it's interesting when we put, when we first put it on there, we were wondering, like, are we going to get this overwhelming um, response or like a no, little to no response? And so far, it's been a very, fairly slow response. So I, I think like, I would, I would say um, for right now, like with College of the Atlantic, I would reach out to them and just say who you are and see and see what they what they say. Um, you know, I think if we get to this a place, um, you know, we obviously this is a public website and it's not just a main website. You can't make a website just as accessible to people only in Maine, but we are very much focusing the resources on Maine. Like we're highlighting Maine organizations, we're thinking about Maine schools and Maine students and Maine families. Um, but we know that some of this stuff would actually work in other places as well. And so, um, you know, as the word gets out and people start to see this, we'll see, you know, what happens there and, and how, um, but, you know, our priority is main for sure. Um, but, you know, that not all of these things are pulled to the max right now. So, right. I would also add that as we've been running workshops for teachers, and I, I love this, we've discovered that there are many teachers in other states who still sort of self-identify as Mainers. So it turns out that Maine isn't just a place, it's a state of mind <laughs> that makes us happy. <laughs> yeah, and somebody, um, a couple are asking like, just for reassurance, like that they can share it with colleagues. Absolutely, it is live, communitylearningforme.org. Please share it far and wide. And and again, to reiterate, we were we were very focused on Maine resources and, and making this resource available to Maine folks, um, but it certainly is is not just for Maine. And um, as far as certainly as far as sharing goes, so so please please help us get the word out. And um, you can share it on your yes, Bev, share it on the Big Island website. That would be great. There's Thank also you. a Facebook page, Community Learning for Me, and I'll give a shout out to Megan Leach, who is our Maine Forest Collaborative Coordinator and who has done the bulk of the work in moving resources from one website to the other. Uh, she has been doing a great job putting sessions up on the website. So go ahead and become a friend of the Community Learning for Me website and you'll get, um, you'll get notifications of things that are happening. If you have a, an organizational website and you would like to collaborate with us so that we can post your things and you can post our things, um, you can reach out via the, web, via the Facebook page for that as well. I see a new um, chat comment coming in about sharing among schools and teachers. And, uh, we're really interested in that. I mean, to some extent, the, the session that we ran last, earlier this week, is really a, about that. It's teachers who are doing good work and who want to talk about their good work with other teachers and get feedback from those teachers. And as we look ahead on the site, the idea of teachers just being able to interact with teachers and share what they're doing is actually really exciting. It's really good. Yeah, and just to build on that, we, we in the professional development section or the um, educators section, um, we do have several sessions that are that are sort of that are officially that and then also just coaching and and one-on-one um, -on -one sessions that are available and and so definitely reach out if you have an idea or if you have a group of teachers that you think this would be a great place for them to present. We're happy to work with people. Sometimes teachers are super comfortable presenting to their students, but not so comfortable presenting to other folks. So we can we can help with just getting people ready to present and, and use this as a place to, to sort of try that out. Um, so definitely, that's that would be a great use of this. Yeah, and I, I think Gloria's comment is like that schools and students could share student to student through this too. And that might be an interesting thing to like to, to set up a sort of, you know, school group to school group network where they can present learning and, and um, you know, present results or, you know, those kind of kind of virtual um, uh, presentation kind of things it could be really cool too. Yeah, that's a great idea. There's very much a sense, to, this site is what, Coro, eight weeks old, four weeks old, six, something like that. There's a, there's a sense that, that there's an opportunity just to do new things that we've not done before. And that's very much, we're very super open to that. So. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions or, or suggestions? It is almost five o'clock on Thursday. So I don't know about you, but Zoom fatigue is definitely happening. Um, really grateful for everyone for staying on and for, for being here. And uh, yeah, I think we'll, 
we'll close it out unless there's anything else. Last call for comments or questions. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you.